In this session, I'm going to give you a very quick introduction into continuous integration and continuous delivery. But before that, let's quickly try to understand what DevOps is. There are various meanings for DevOps if you look at internet, but I just took the Wikipedia definition of what DevOps is. The concept here is that the development and operation teams works, sometimes QA teams works very closely and they will very likely have uh, cross-functional activities that allows them to release the software faster, more efficiently into production. Finally, the outcome they are trying to drive is to achieve the business results very quickly by addressing the market needs as fast as possible. So there are a lot of benefits for going for a DevOps culture. It increased team uh, collaboration. So instead of finger pointing uh, why the operation team did something wrong or why development team did something wrong, the team works very closely to find the solution uh, for the problem in hand. You increase the number of deliveries that you are releasing to the environments and hence also the speed at which you are releasing the software. You also improve the reliability of the software. The reliability is improved because everything is automated, so you can test the uh, solution in multiple environments, you can deploy into thousands of servers, and you can quickly check what is happening. Security posture is improved because you can now run uh, automated security penetration testing, you can do um, boring uh, testing again and again instead of uh, involving a human resource to uh, execute some set of tasks, very likely that he will introduce some errors in the process. Scale is improved because you don't need to now spend uh, deploying a solution or building a solution only for one system. You have automated it in a way that you created scripts to deploy the solution into thousands of servers. And finally, you increase the speed, speed to go to market, uh, speed to delivery, which means that you can get the customer feedback quickly make some changes, release it, test it on the real markets, see whether the features are doing fine. If not, modify it and then reiterate and then improve, reiterate and improve. So there are different uh, stages of uh, software release process. This is just a broad view. Uh, so it will start with a developer writing some code within C Sharp for Java or JavaScript. And then they probably do some reviews, uh, submit into a, a source control systems like GitHub with some version in place. And if they have a build system already integrated with their source control system, the build will identify that there's a change into the source and it's time to build it. So the build process is where you are going to create the, uh, the binaries, the libraries, uh, do some minification of JavaScripts uh, and also you will probably run some uh, matrices to check the quality of the code. For example, uh, in the build stage, you will run some uh, matrices to check uh, how many lines of comments are there per line of code, which improves, uh, so higher the number, uh, more readable the code is. And also you may create something like content images during this build phase. And the next stage is the testing phase. Uh, of course, uh, these tests, uh, it's kind of inter overlapping with unit test. Uh, so unit test is mainly around testing a specific one. The test, uh, the broad category I have mentioned here is around more towards integrated testing. Uh, so you may run some load testing, penetration testing, uh, UI testing, maybe you do some manual testing. So if all these processes successfully execute, you will go for the production deployment. So these are the steps involved in releasing a software into a production. If you can build your software from the time the developers commit into the source control system, you have achieved the status of continuous integration. Continuous integration is not something new, but about 20 or 30 years ago, it's a very hot topic. If you can deploy your software with some kind of a manual intervention into production, then you have achieved the continuous delivery. So what you usually do is you write a really good quality test cases so that uh, you have some assurance when I automate this process, the software that is going into production is of high quality. And you may have some manual intervention to um, deploy into production. 
if you have automated the entire process in a way that from the time the developer commits the changes into the source control system, it get built, tested, and sent to production, you have achieved the status of uh, continuous deployment. There are many products and solutions available on the market to uh, do these uh, deployments. So for example, you may decide to use JIT as your source control system, or decide to use GitHub or Bitbucket as the hosted version of JIT. Maybe you decided to use a completely different kind of uh, source control system like Subversion or Mercurial. Uh, there are thousands of build tools. If you are writing .NET application, you will use MS Build. If you are writing Java application, you will build it using Apache Ant. Uh, if you plan to use uh, .NET testing, you will use some a tool like NUnit. And there are tools for testing and uh, sending your solution to production. And also there are a lot of CI CD systems. So CI CD system is a system that allows to orchestrate these different steps. Uh, they have easy integration methods to execute multiple tasks so that from the time uh, the developer commit into a source control system, it get uh, the build system get notified, it builds the software, then runs some tests. So that orchestration piece the CI CD system can do. Modern CI CD, CI -CD system have some more additional features to uh, do project management, assign tasks, uh, do load testing, uh, integrate with other third party tools. Uh, but CI CD system in general is, uh, think it as a hub of uh, all these activities where you can go and then uh, monitor and uh, integrate well with all these small, small activities. AWS also has a few tools. This is not an exhaustive list. For example, source control system, uh, if you are planning to use JIT kind of a repository, you can use AWS code commit. If you plan to use um, uh, microservices testing, you can use AWS X-Ray. Uh, if you want to have a build system, you can use AWS code build. And of course, you can easily deploy your solution to production using AWS code deploy uh, or using our um, APIs. We also have code pipeline, uh, which means that uh, you can integrate with existing systems. For example, you may have your own build system, you may have your own uh, on-premises testing mechanism, and if you want to integrate with uh, AWS, you can easily use a tool like AWS code pipeline that does the orchestration of build process. If you want to have an integrated feeling, you can still use AWS code star uh, that allows you to uh, execute these steps in a one single uh, plane of glass. In these labs, we are going to use Azure DevOps Server Express Edition as our CI CD system. The reason being that this is a Microsoft specific uh, lab series where we are going to teach you how to integrate Microsoft technologies with AWS. So we chose uh, Azure DevOps Server Express. Azure DevOps Server Express is a free edition with a limited number of users, uh, but it's a good testing environment. Uh, the UI is pretty much similar to what you would find in hosted version of Azure DevOps services. And uh, what you learn here is very useful if you are going to operate your Azure uh, DevOps environments. The concepts we are going to learn here applies not only to Azure DevOps server, uh, it also applies to uh, any other CI CD uh, system like Team City, Jenkins, or Hudson. For example, uh, the build pipelines is common for AWS, it's common for Azure DevOps Service, it's common for Hudson or Jenkins. They all have this concept of build pipelines. They also have the concept of build. They also have the concept of build agent. So what you learn in this lab series is useful for other build system as well. Azure DevOps Server uh, was previously known as Team Foundation Server, uh, but later uh, Microsoft did a rebranding uh, where they uh, call our TFS Server. Uh, the new name is Azure DevOps Server. So some online articles that you will find uh, if you want to search Google for some issues that you may face, uh, you can also search under the term TFS which stands for Team Foundation Server. 
regardless of the build system that you use, the important thing is uh, whether the cloud service providers support different languages, APIs uh, to integrate easily with your preferred choice of uh, CI CD system. Uh, so all our APIs are exposed in PowerShell, in command line, uh, and we have tooling support around Visual Studio. So maybe you decided to uh, write some scripts using your preferred language. You can still interact with AWS services very easily. If your system doesn't have uh, plugins available uh, to interact with AWS, but it still supports, let's say, command line uh, execution or PowerShell scripts, you can easily invoke AWS services to build, deploy uh, your solutions. If you are a Microsoft fan and if you are using Team Foundation Server, uh, or currently known as Azure DevOps Services, you have plugins available for that, which makes your life easy to deploy into AWS services. Feel free to explore uh, Wikipedia articles that gives you a list of build tools available for you. So this include, for example, uh, if you go into this Wiki Wikipedia article that showcases you different hosting, code hosting facilities available for you, GitHub is the most famous one but explore what other technologies are available. So that includes, for example, different source control systems like SVN, how they work. So go there and then explore these uh, old technologies or sometimes um, that little known but very interesting. Uh, for example, when you are talking about testing, what does testing mean? Uh, so testing means a lot of things. Maybe you want to do the GUI testing so there are tools to do GUI testing. So instead of having a human user to automate that, uh, to do those testing, you can uh, write some scripts to uh, do some mouse clicks or to browse to a website. Uh, also, there are a ton of other load testing tools available. So if you go into that, you can find, for example, uh, tools like Load Runner that allows you to create fake traffic to your website. And also uh, explore the uh, different uh, CID systems available. Uh, what you want to understand here is that although we use only the Team Foundation server or Azure DevOps server, uh, understand that there are a lot of other different uh, CI CD systems available. For example, Jenkins being the most uh, famous uh, build system. Uh, and try to learn the concepts and then try to map how the concepts of Azure DevOps Server or Team Foundation Server is applied on Jenkins or Travis CV. Or maybe uh, your company is using something like uh, Team City. Um, so try to understand how these uh, different uh, systems are working so that allows you to appreciate uh, different technologies.